Yo, guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And I wanted to show you some base building tips and tricks that you can use in order to build an epic base inside of Ark Survival Ascended. Now, I'm going to talk to you about everything from the very basics to advanced techniques that you can use to kind of simplify and make things run better for your base. Now, why should I be someone that you trust for this? I've got over 12,000 hours in Ark Survival Evolved, and I've already basically played, I'd say, at least 300 hours inside of Ark Survival Ascended. Kind of sad, but, you know, I love it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you all kinds of new things, little tricks, tips to use all of the new building features. Now, there's a lot, so I'm going to go in quick as I can, but it's going to be a longer video. So sit down and hopefully you enjoy this. Now, this Again, I, if you don't mind, smack that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and consider subbing to the channel because I'm getting close to 100K and that's kind of been my dream all along. So we're going to start with the building basics, right? Now they've changed some core things about this. So when it comes to foundations, walls and all that kind of stuff, let's start with the basics. If you're building, you want to start out in a flat area because flat areas allow you to get better overall everything, right? Because you're going to have more simplistic things. You're going to be able to not have to mess with too much. So we're starting over on Herbivore Island. If you haven't been here before, it's an awesome place to start. First off, with foundations now, if you click once, you can actually move them up and down and rotate. What you actually want to do is find the nearest ledge or the area of incline, and you want to raise that foundation to that point and kind of line it up with the edge. The reason we're going to do that is because we're actually going to gain space that we can use. See, that kind of leans over the edge a little bit. Um, and, and I did that for a reason. I'll show you in a second. But we want to gain that edge because the more space we can utilize, the better off we are because we want to build a nice big base with the opportunity to expand if we absolutely want to, right? So the big thing you want to aim for is you want to make your base a total of five wide. Five wide is a very important number, and I'll show you in just a second. And once you make it five wide, you're going to want to make it a total of six across. Now, five by six is actually the perfect base size inside of Arc because it allows you to fit everything that you need inside of the game. Now, I'll go ahead and show you how to fix that issue that I had right over there in just a second. And you're going to place all of your foundations down first because you want to be able to make sure you have a nice flat area. Now, if you don't have a flat area like I've just experienced right here, I, even though this can be a flat area, if you aim towards the top, it'll actually raise your foundation up to meet the edge. Um, in some cases, maybe that's a little too low, but you can see how this one's not perfectly flat. Now, what you can do inside of Arc in order to compensate, carry a couple of ceilings on you and ceilings actually perfectly line up. You can see it right there with foundations now. So you can make that perfectly flat area for OCD builders like myself. Now, again, you can see that we've made our nice little five by six structure. Next thing we want to move on to is walls. Now I'm going to move on to the walls and there's basically going to do something special for each corner, but we're going to go ahead and put walls the entire way around our base. Um, and the difference between walls in this actual, why am I not able to place That's frustrating. Um, and basically the difference between walls in this mode is that you can actually place walls and actually have control over the types of walls that they are. Now, I'm going to go ahead and place my first layer down so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's kind of frustrating because sometimes it, the clipping is great, but unfortunately it does this where it occasionally places a wall. A big update that they added in Ark Survival Ascended is you can now pick up a wall at any point in time. It does not matter. So what you can actually do at any point, pick up your wall. And then if you go ahead and use the R command, you can change what that wall becomes. Anything from a short doorway, double doorway, uh, window walls, and then secret doorway. My favorite thing that they added is the secret doorway. And you can literally go ahead and place this right here. Um, and you can actually pick up your wall I'm going to show you. And then anytime, just pick up that wall and add a new one. And it's going to allow you to escape through that wall. I like to place one at each of my corners inside of a base because in case I need to get out of that door for any particular reason, I can just go ahead and use that to open the door. And you'll see that it actually looks like metal wall. It just adds the ability to go ahead and hit E on it in order to open close it. That's the only difference between this wall and this wall. Super useful feature. Now, now that you understand, you can put the corners on. The last thing that I would do, if you're in an area that's a little more dangerous, I would go ahead and add yourself in a window like this right here, because being able to shoot out of this, but nothing can get into it is a huge advantage. But you don't have to do that. If you're more of someone that's like me, that just likes how things look like that, go ahead and leave it like that. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, the reason that we left a two opening right now is because doorways and walls snap. 
and we're gonna go ahead and place a metal gate down. This allows us to get any creature of good size inside of our base, and it just gives us an easy access point if we don't feel like using a door just for ourselves, right? Now, the cool thing about a gate in this mode is it actually lines up to be exactly three tall. See how it land, lines up perfectly? And that's exactly how tall we're gonna make our base conveniently, right? So we're gonna go ahead and make this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go around in a circle here. And the reason that we're doing this like this is because we want to make sure that it's all nice and set up for when we want to do this. Now, inevitably, you're probably going to build thatch in the very beginning. And that's OK, because you just want to get your shell and then eventually upgrade to metal because metal is just better overall. It can take more hits and it's just a better overall structure. Now, we've got our giant little building right here, right? So now what we want to do is actually kind of a cheeky little thing. We're going to go ahead and build our ceiling just like this. Come on now, thank you. And we're gonna go ahead and build a layer of ceilings across just this first little section. Now, the reason that we're only doing it for this first section right here, why is it so difficult sometimes to line up ceilings? It bothers me sometimes, but you know, it is what it is. So as long as you point your arrow at it, it should actually link up. There we go. So the reason that we wanna add it like this is because we're gonna go ahead and leave this as an area that we can use for height. And we're gonna go ahead and use uh, greenhouse ceilings on the rest of this build. Now, the reason that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna have a integrated um, greenhouse inside of our base. And uh, that's a huge advantage inside of our, I love doing greenhouse builds um, because we're gonna be able to actually add a bunch of functionality to our base. And what, why did that place down there? Whatever. And it's, it's just gonna, in the long run, this is our goal, right? So you can put ceilings for the short term here, but in the long run, you're gonna wanna add greenhouses. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a mini box is what I call it. Um, and you're gonna have three walls and we're gonna have a basic ceiling on top of this. And this is just gonna give us the ability to get on top of the roof using a set of metal stairs. Now, other than adding an awesome ambiance, you can see that we've got the generic core structure of any base build down. We've got all of our place nice and secured. And then you've got two options. You can either use a ladder or you can use stairs in order to get up to that. I'm gonna go and show you why I prefer stairs, but this is up to you. You can see it adds uh, shallow metal. That's actually not what I wanted. I want the ASR stuff. I'm trying to show you this right now. Metal, ramp, roof, and stairs. Now you can see that I can actually change the type of stuff that I'm using in order to kind of move around this. And you can see how this is kind of cool. You can build these like rampways and stuff. I'm just gonna make it nice and simple for myself. I like to use metal stairs. And then you can go ahead and hit Z in order to rotate around the actual points in which you can use. And I like to set it up like either this corner right here. So you can kind of just run up like this and you get up to your roof, but you don't, you can do however you want. So now you want to kind of keep it on one side because we're going to use all of this space up here. Now, the reason that I have this here is we're going to go ahead and place some more ceilings right here. And you can use all of this, just like you see me doing right here in order to place our greenhouse in the future. So we've got all of our basic building techniques down, right? And we're going to go ahead and just show you what it looks like. Even though I haven't even gone into placing the actual structures yet, this kind of base is a very, oh my goodness, I keep placing things down wrong. Um, but it's a very good generic base build. So we've got ourselves a nice little inner area. This is where we're going to have all of our crop plots up here with the greenhouse effect up on top. It's going to give us a huge advantage and then we're just gonna be able to place everything there. Now on the base floor, right? We've got everything that we need in our inventory, but obviously you're not gonna be able to get all this end game stuff right off the bat, but you can essentially just build it and then destroy it and add the end game stuff in place. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and use this front door as our example. Whenever you enter this gate, you wanna leave this first two by two kind of un with nothing there because you wanna be able to quickly get inside left, right, straight, whatever you need to do and kind of just have an open space. It's a lot easier that way. But directly next to where you're at, what I like to do is I like to place a feeding trough because a lot of times you're just gonna have a random crap that you have in your inventory that you can quickly throw into a feeding trough. And uh, what you're gonna be able to do is just toss it in there, let your dinos eat you real quick that are nearby. And it's a huge, huge advantage, right? You can see why that would be effective. It's just a nice little dump place if you wanna think of it that way. Now, the next thing you want to do is have a vault nearby. What I like to do is you can either have it in the corner like I have. See how this like snaps to the wall right here quite conveniently. I like to place it just outside of that two by two box that I was talking about, but it doesn't matter as long as it's somewhat close to the entrance. So you can kind of have like a junk box, junk drawer, and you just toss it inside nice and convenient and you just put everything you need right there. All right. 
Next up, Industrial Forge. Very large structure, right? You can see how this would cause a problem. I don't like putting this inside of the base because it just wastes a whole bunch of space. So what we do is we build a nice little flat area on the outside of base. We're going to go and open these, close those, essentially. When they close, all of a sudden we can place this down. And we build a nice little landing pad, right? Now, I like to build this. Um, you can do this however you want. I like to do a two-wide structure. And then with this last corner over here, I end up usually doing this right here. One, two, three, four by three. Now, you don't have to build any of this. You can technically fit it on the inside. I just like to, so do this as you wish. But it'll snap quite nicely to this right here, right? You can see this right here. Now, what you can do is a secret little trick. Pick up that metal wall. That thing does a good job of blocking the entire thing. You now have access to a industrial forge inside and outside of your base. You can technically slide it a little closer and get cheeky with it by removing snap points. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Where was my there is industrial forge and I'm going to go ahead and disable snapping by holding Z and then you can kind of place this right about move a little bit closer right there. All right. So now you can see I definitely can't get inside this area. I can kind of crouch my way in if I needed to, but it's going to give me access to that metal industrial forge inside and outside of my base, which is a huge advantage. And because of that, I'm going to use a generator. And that's the next thing we're going to place down. And we're going to go and enable snapping on this guy. I like to place this right next to my stairs because you see it all the time. So you can actually see how much uh, element or whatever you happen to be functioning on is inside of it. If you are running off of gas, that is totally fine, by the way. You just want to make sure you see how it says fuel in there. You want it somewhere that you can easily see it. So I like placing it next to the stairs because I go up and down the stairs a lot. All right. So. Once you have generator, you can turn on your actual industrial forge, and that's a huge advantage. Now, next to your industrial forge, right, we're going to go ahead and place all of our other important stuff. We're going to go and unsnap this guy, and you can actually see how I'm going to place it here. We're going to move a little bit closer, and we're going to place this right there. Now, the reason we're going to place this like this, we want a little bit of room to run behind it, is because this allows us to look on both sides of this and access and just be able to push things in and out of the fabricator without having to try very hard. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the smithy on the other side. Now, where's my smithy? Did I not make one? There it is. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing, but on this side. So now I've got a smithy on one side of my industrial forge, my fabricator on the other, and you've got easy access to a nice little pad of being able to access things without any effort at all. You don't have to go ahead and move around. You can do your metal runs outside of your base. And then if you really wanted to get tricky with this, you can actually place this wall um, and use it as this right here, a kind of window, and you can access it through the window. That's up to you if you want to do something like that. If you want to make your base look nice and pretty like that, that's a fun thing to do. All right, so now that we've got that, right, what we're going to go ahead and go to next is we're going to move into the other things that are of importance. Industrial cooker, you can do this downstairs, but because all of our stuff that we're going to be using for the industrial cooker is going to be upstairs, I like to go ahead and place this against a wall, easy to access upstairs. Now, this is where we're going to place all of our crop plots. So we can essentially just place our crop plots next to that. So there's your industrial cooker. We're in the short term, non-industrial cooker based stuff. So next thing, industrial grill, right? Now, this is another one of those things you want to place near the front door because we have access to our trough right there. I'm going to go ahead and place it near our, that area go ahead and turn it on because when we walk into the base, I want to be able to have quick access to cooking the meat and all that kind of stuff. Now we've got everything that's basics. There are some other nice things that are ha to have access to, right? Industrial grinder, very large object. Guess what? We built that nice little pad outside for this reason exactly. Now, what you can do, you don't have to put it here. I like to place this thing on the outside of my base. Now, if you're playing a PVP server, duh, don't place it on the outside. I tend to place it somewhere near one of these corners because they are so massive. They take up so much wasted space inside of a build. The other thing you can do if you want to get cheeky is you can technically put a layer just like I am right now on. Thank you. And you can go ahead and place your actual structure of that industrial grinder up on top of this layer so you can still access it and put it inside of your base, right? Because now it's a nice flat area. I can place this up on top of my stuff and we should be good to go. Now, cool thing. You can jump and reach this thing and see so you're good to go. Now, if you want to build a stairway up to it, you can, but that's entirely up to you. Notice how it kind of makes a lot of noise, so I tend to turn it off. So this is a very compact build. 
This is not our breeding facility, but this is all the basics that you need. Now, you can obviously upgrade to your uh, tech trough or you have your tech rep. You see how massive this structure is? This is one of those things that you're going to want to place outside your base or build a much bigger base in general. It's up to you if you want to. I and I usually on my single playthroughs don't actually even get to a uh, tech rep, but you can place this right on the outside right there. I just don't like doing it. I'm, I never make it that far in my actual modes. Um, so we've got all of our basics right here, right? So you've got all the end game stuff. We've got vaults. And what I like to do, we're going to go ahead and enable snapping. And with that, we're going to go ahead and see how I can place all of these. And it's going to fit four right there. You have one of your drop boxes. You've got one for armor, saddles, whatever you need. You've got four massive storage locations. And you've got everything else that's accessible. Now, the reason that we're kind of building like this is because everything is nice and clean. You can easily upgrade, you can easily change things around, and you can easily access things with the important areas that you need to access them. Now, the last thing that I'll tell you, right, you are eventually going to get to a point where you want to have access to a tech replicator. If you're on a PVE server, put it out in front of your base. It wastes so much space, and it's just, I mean, eventually you just want to have a giant grind pad is what they're called, and you basically just build this giant structure out in front of your base, and you put all of your tech repi and your important stuff right out in the front of your base. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't actually need it technically. I will typically place this on snap, please. Thank you. Um, and you can place this right on the outside, just like you see me doing right here. And I'm going to move it a little further back. You want to basically move it so it doesn't block your way into base. So move it as far as you can down this area. Really? Thank you. It should be pretty good right there. So now we've got access to a tech rep, tech rep. If you want to go one more further back, you could, but that's entirely up to you. All right. So now we've got all of our basic builds, right? We've got all of this done. This is your base. You have everything placed in here that you could possibly need. Vaults, repis, everything. I'm going to remove the repi because I just don't care about it. The last thing and the last kind of big thing that you hit inside of Ark is your, you see it right in front of me right here. This is your chemistry bench. The reason that we've got this built like this is with your smithy, you want to waste a minimal amount of space. So we go in and place the chemistry bench right in line with that smithy, and you suddenly have a perfect solo player base. It's very easy to use, and it's just a lot of it's just a lot of fun, right? Like very simple. All of these builds, you got plenty of space. Everything that you could need could fit inside of this. Next thing that we're gonna do, and kind of like the last thing before we go into like a, a building pen, um, if you want to, uh, yeah. This is going to go ahead and have your crop plots. These are going to be right here. You can use, by the way, large is only useful for the like uh, plant species. Mediums and smalls are your best friend. And what you do is you essentially do not use your snapping early. You snap them after you place one down. Um, and then you can kind of like place them like this. Go ahead and show you that. And then you turn on snapping after you've placed one down because they will actually snap uh, snap up to six tall. And that's perfect. That's what we want to do because snapping six tall will allow you to reach all of them without actually jumping. And then you kind of, I don't know why this one's not letting me finagle it, but you should be able to finagle it pretty easily into this middle one. I may have messed up a little bit. But six tall will allow you to access all of them without actually jumping. And inside of the small ones, you're going to place your berries all of those types of berries and stack those up nice and high and inside of your mediums you're going to place your other things you can stack them or make them look like this it depends on what you prefer for your like your ocp inside of arc and again stack these six tall as well um i think i actually stacked them five let's go to six right there boom and everything that we need is now inside of this base nice and easy to access it super easy right everything's up here and then all you have to do is go over to your industrial cooker once you inevitably want to use that now you've also got a nice little area where you can drop down and this is not too tall where you're going to take damage from dropping big benefit right too tall don't take damage so everything that we need is inside of this base build right so cool what else can i teach you tips and tricks wise so we've talked about the basic structure of what you need inside of arc tips and tricks if you're playing on a pve server move everything on a grind pad outside so you don't waste space inside of your base that means placing things like your chemistry bench fabricators and smithies outside next to your industrial forge turning off snapping will enable you to place things right next to each other to waste as little space as possible just like this right here right um placing things like your industrial cooker next to this guy right here your chemistry bench is a very nice thing in the end game 
because you want to place structures that you often use each other next to each other. That's why you want the smithy next to your getting over to it, your fabricator, because this one will use bullets from this guy and you kind of can go back and forth without actually moving. So place like structures next to each other. Smithy and fabricator should always place nearby. The chemistry bench should always place somewhat nearby this guy up here, but it's not a big waste, right? As long as you have your industrial cooker and your smithy or your um, chemistry bench somewhat near each other because things are pretty light in those, that's your best bet. Last thing, place all of these guys next to this always because you don't want to have to run very far. So those are your first layer, layer very simple tricks, right? Next thing you can do for every structure inside of your base, you can use this concept. Sorry, I had to cough right there. But you can use that door concept. So you can actually just open the door in order to access the back side of those structures. Hmm. So I can just access the industrial grill and then close the door like it never happened and then go inside my base, right? If I want to access these vaults, I can do the exact same thing and build a metal wall behind those vaults that will actually allow me to access those. And that's like a layer two intermediate trip, like a little trick that you can use, right? Now you want to maximize the space you have inside of Ark. So the closer you can get things together, the better off you are. And what you can actually do, we can use quarter walls, right? So if you haven't seen the quarter walls, quarter walls are pretty awesome. Er, wow, Q-U-A-R. Wow, I can't spell at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, actually I'm gonna use stone so you can kind of see the difference between the actual quarter walls and regular walls. Using quarter walls like this is going to be something that you are technically can crouch into just like this, but it's a half of those walls. So it's even though it says quarter wall, it just takes up a quarter of that wall, but it's half the height. Now, with half the height, you can place a smithy on top of another smithy. Save yourself some, excuse me, save yourself some room. I'm going to go ahead and place some of these quarter walls down and use my these to my advantage, right? Why can't I? It's not going to snap over here. What? And that's what I'm looking for. So you can technically place a quarter wall down just like this. I'm, I'm not going to make it look pretty this time, but I can place one of those down. And then in that little half space, I can also fit structures. Now, as long as <clears throat> that structure can fit inside of that zone, it'll light up green. You can kind of see how this lights up green. No, it's not very pretty, but you can stack things on top of each other, just like you're seeing me do here with uh, quarter walls. And you can do this at any point inside of your base to use quarter walls to kind of stack things like that. Now, you can do that in order to maximize your space as well. You can kind of stack chemistry benches half offset with each other using quarter walls. And then you could stack smithies on top because they, they're nice and small. So there's how you half stack things. Now you've got all of this in your nice little base. The other things that you want to know, right? You're eventually going to get to the point where you're exclusively using tech to build because a tech replicator will essentially replace everything inside of your base. You can see how it literally will make everything for you, right? Everything can be crafted inside of a tech repi. So you don't technically need anything else, but those tech repis, just so you can see, are three and a half tall, so you actually need to make a four tall base to fit a repi inside of your base, um, but you don't have to, just keep that in mind. And they run off of your electric generator, so just have this somewhere in the middle of your base, your tech generator, in order to power everything in your base. Now, all of that being said, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna give you a couple more tips and tricks, just quick ones, because I know we're getting to a pretty long video at this point in time. With your base, right, utilize your roof because this is one of the most underused things in like a PVE base. You can technically place anything up here. Repi, beehives, whatever you want to place up here can be placed up here. You can place plant species X for defense purposes. You can put them on your corners in order to make sure that nothing can get near your base. You can put anything up here. If you want to have a landing pad for where you like you land your Argentavis or your birds on top of your base, have them right here and then run inside of your nice little zone right here in order to access your base. Utilizing your roof is kind of like an end game thing that people forget that they can do. Even as simple as having a vault, a drop vault on top for when you inevitably need one, just on the corner, right? Because you're gonna run into your base, you're gonna wanna toss stuff in and out of it, and then have that. So having a drop vault is a super important thing. Now, next thing I'm gonna show you, last thing, and I'm gonna kind of, like this is an organization thing, tech uh, dedicated storage. It's kind of one of the best things that you can use in ARC. And one of the things that people kind of forget that you can do with it, you can actually use this thing, enable snapping, in order to actually place it inside of the floor. So it will kind of snap nice and peacefully if we can get it to work. See how it kind of like goes like that? There we go. You can actually snap these on top of itself. 
make these your floor inside of Ark. Now, fortunately, I'm not going to be able to snap for some reason because it's not going to let me. But you can place anything as, as a floor. And I'm going to go ahead and move this and it'll snap to the side. Oh, wow, it snapped to that. Whoopsies. But you can you got you saw what I was trying to do, right? So you can actually place those um, in your floor and make tech foundations and tech um, dedicated storage your actual floor inside of Ark. So this is a ton. I know it's a 25 minute video and this is all your basic level stuff. We can go into much more advanced depth building, but this will give you everything you need to know to have a very functional base for your first few bases and give you some just hopefully even those of you that have watched this are a little more advanced builders, some advanced techniques of actually staggering things in order to make sure that they work inside of your base. That's all I got. I don't want to make this too much longer. I'll do an advanced tips video as well. Let me know what else you'd like to see inside of the comments below and uh, outside of that teach.